Okay. Thank you, Annalisa, and uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to this uh, fantastic conference. This is, I'm, I'm kind of a veteran at this point. I think this is my, my third. Um, so it's really wonderful uh, to be here. And uh, perfect timing for following um, uh, Dean Boyce and, uh, and, and Brenda, you know, exactly the right topics from um, uh, global le le leadership and engineering and then the interconnectivity of Cisco. So I wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit about a, the specific example, which is me and my, my career, my interest. Um, my research is really the story of two stories that have come together, two fields that have come together. And as was mentioned by the previous speakers, uh, in technology today, things are moving forward at incredible speed. Um, and so the two stories that have come together in my research are the story of computing, where computing has evolved and where it's going in the future, and the story of light, of optics. Uh, so my research, my field is in the field of optics. In fact, my name, uh, Karen, is, actually means um, a ray of light in, in Hebrew. So appropriately, I followed the career intended by, by my, my Jewish parents. Um, so, uh, so I've been doing research in, in photonics and, uh, and optics, and there are many wonderful properties of light. Of course, we see, we can image, but the other property of light, which is really amazing, is the movement. Light is the, essentially the fundamental technology for moving information. We all know that photons travel at the speed of light, so they go very fast. They also don't interact with each other. They like to hang out together. So you can shove a lot of information into those photons and travel at the speed of light. And that's why we have things like fiber optic communications. We have a lot of networks that are built out of uh, optical communications at Cisco. So one of my sort of passions in my research has been to bring light, to bring optical communication into the world of computing. Can we communicate between computers with light? And, uh, Luckily for, for my field, what's been happening at computing is that they've become much more in need of communications as, as we have gone forward in time. If you, some of you, some of the older people in this room, my generation, you might remember you know, the, the microprocessor, and every couple of years we upgraded our PC and you know, we'd go like twice as fast as the previous PC. And a few years ago, that has completely stopped. What happened was, instead of increasing the speed of our transistors, of our microprocessors and our computers, we've just increased the numbers. So we have things like dual core and quad core and all kinds of stuff that Intel and other companies have been promoting. In fact, there's a lot of jokes, inside jokes among the engineers is, you know, a lot of these extra cores, they're just there to sort of, you know, be as a marketing tool, but they don't actually really do anything. Uh, the reason that that's been going on is the reason that instead of making the, the processor faster and faster, we've increased the number of cores is because of energy, energy consumption. Uh, you might notice that when you put the laptop on your lap in an airplane, which is where I spend half my time, it gets kind of hot. And one of the problems with, with microprocessors and transistors is that as you go faster and faster, you try to crunch all that data that Brenda showed us, that luckily, thank you all for generating all that data, um, it, it gets hotter, it consumes a lot more energy. And so instead of building it faster and faster, what, what engineers have done is they've just had a lot more of these microprocessors on the chip instead of having one run faster. And so imagine a lot of, a lot of soldiers sort of working together in parallel instead of just one working faster, right? And so what do we need in terms of getting all these soldiers, these men, <laughs> to work together in parallel. We need them to communicate with each other. And so because of energy, because of the power limitations that are being driven by our desire for increased computing performance, increased computing capabilities, there is a greater and greater need for communication. We need to be able to have all those processors and all those computers more and more connected with each other. And this is where, where optics and communications comes in. And so that's been happening on the computing side. And luckily for us, you know, we, we are doing research in optics and optical communication, and that is a beautiful fit 
into the computing world. The only problem was that the technology, the, the actual physics technology that are used for making optical devices was not silicon. It wasn't the CMOS, the silicon that we're all used to, Silicon Valley. But what, has, what we have done in the last very few years, and this is very, very recent history, this is cutting edge research, is we've developed a new field that's called silicon photonics, silicon optics. And what it means is that we can actually take all these stuff that we've been doing in optics and put it right in the same chip that you have your microprocessor in. So we actually brought the photons, we're bringing the photons right into your computer. I predict in the next few years, not very many, your laptop, your, it's not gonna be laptops anymore, you know, everything is like these devices, mobile, et cetera, are going to have photons in there. In fact, um, I was mentioning to Brenda that some of the, Cisco is here today on campus recruiting, and uh, um, one of the people that is recruiting from, from my department is a company that Cisco recently bought uh, that does exactly this, silicon photonics. So this is very much, uh, you know, very much in terms of uh, industry interest, um, as well as, as the research and the capability of engineering. This is just a beautiful example about, you know, how multidisciplinary engineering really is and how relevant it is to the cutting edge of driving new uh, technologies forward, future computing, uh, which is really the, the combination of computing and communication. We're nothing without our internet. If, if, you know, if I learned my lesson, it was during Hurricane Sandy, for those of you that are on the East Coast. You know, we went from being 21st century to being 18th century in, in a matter of a day, right? As soon as the electricity went out, you know, the only place my kids had any connectivity was in the car when I could plug in the iPads and, and my, my router. So um, luckily, you know, we'll keep it going now with the photonics. So, uh, this, is, this was my one example for kind of, you know, just as a, as a focused example of what we're doing here at Columbia and uh, going into the future. And so thank you so much for uh, your attention.